Sydney's got some of the most expensive houses in the entire world. But that means people need massive mortgages to buy in Sydney. And after nine straight interest rate rises from the Reserve Bank of Australia, many mortgage holders are in mortgage hell. So in Sydney, we have many home buyers who can't actually afford a home, but we also have many home owners who can no longer afford to pay their mortgage. What does this mean for Sydney house prices? I'm Biko Constantinos, and that's what we're going to talk about today. One thing that would be worse than going through mortgage hell would be going through life without quality independent content. So please consider subscribing to my channel and if you click on the like button, it'll help this video get shared more broadly. Now back to Sydney. Sydney is the capital of New South Wales and is situated on the east coast of Australia. Sydney has a population over 5 million, making it the largest populated city in Australia. Sydney is best known for its harbourfront city Sydney Opera House. And guess what else it's known for? Being one of the cities that always gets destroyed in every end of the world type movie. But are we going to witness the total destruction of Sydney house prices? Sydney's an absolutely gorgeous city, but it's bloody expensive. How expensive? Well, according to the Demographia Housing Affordability Report for 2022, it starts off at one for the most affordable city. But if we go down, we don't find Sydney until the absolute end. Ranked 91st least affordable city in this entire report, only behind Hong Kong, China. How did we get here? Well, Sydney's always had the most desirable real estate in Australia. Even in the 1990s, the prices of houses in Sydney was above all other cities. However, the gap back then was very small. But as the decades went on, look at this gap widen to where now Sydney is miles above any other city in Australia. With house price growth like that, it's no wonder that Sydney is rated one of the least affordable cities in the entire world. When house prices are so expensive, the result is buy have to borrow more to purchase a home. So once again, we've got New South Wales here in blue, which is the state that Sydney's in, having way larger average mortgages than the rest of the country. And this, my friends, is a major risk for Sydney's house prices. The larger the debt, the more the impact from interest rate rises. And guess what? We've had nine of those in a row. Bill Lowe's been pressing that interest rate rise button, not once, but nine times in nine months. Now, why would house prices and mortgage amounts be so ridiculously high? Here's a reason. Interest rates in Australia have been steadily declining for 30 years. But in the last decade, the RBA has been so loose with this monetary policy that they kept dropping rates time and time again. So even before COVID, the cash rate was under 2%. Now, there's no reason for the cash rate to be that low unless you're in the middle of a crisis. So what happened? A crisis hit and rates were then dropped to zero. So we've got Australia, one of the most speculative housing markets in the world, combined with ultra cheap debt. What's that a recipe for? Well in Sydney's case, crazy ridiculous house prices along with massive mortgages. So interest rates have helped to rocket Sydney's house prices to some of the craziest levels in the world. But now now that rates are going up, is the party over? Well, this is what's happened so far. RBA starts lifting interest rates here and Sydney's house prices start to collapse. In fact, they've now fallen 14% from the peak, which is a very large percentage in a short period of time. If we look at the history of other downturns in Sydney, the largest downturn ever seen was 17.4% in 1982-83. So this black line here is our current decline. So it's definitely on par with the steepest falls. And if the rate of decline continues, it will be the largest downturn in Sydney's history. As you can see here, 
Sydney's house price falls are leading the way and because their house prices are so expensive and their mortgage is so huge, I expect Sydney's house price declines to continue to be the sharpest across all of Australia. One of the biggest factors that will continue to put downward pressure on Sydney's house prices is the amount a buyer can borrow. Because interest rates have been hiked so sharply, the amount you can borrow has basically collapsed. If someone was able to borrow 1 million when rates were near zero, that same borrower can only borrow 780,000 and it's even less now because we've had another rate rise. So from previously being able to borrow a million dollars, they can now only borrow around 750,000, which is a huge reduction in borrowing capacity. But what it means for house prices is that buyers cannot bid as high as they previously could. So even if they wanted to buy a house, they simply could not afford it because the banks won't lend them that much. And when buyers can't bid up to what the sellers want, the sellers have to bring down the price to meet what the buyers are able to afford. And this is the main reason why house prices are falling and why they'll continue to fall as interest rates continue rising. Check this out. You need to have an income of 250000 just to be able to buy an average house in Sydney. So that's a high income and we're not even talking above average house. So affordability has been decimated. And if interest rates keep rising, we could see carnage. Let's see what the Reserve Bank of Australia has to say about interest rates. On the 7th of Feb, the board raised rates for the ninth time in nine months, taking the cash rate to 3.35%. Now this was on the back of very sharp inflation. In fact, a 7.8% CPI, which has shocked many people because everyone was expecting that inflation would drop, meaning no more requirement to raise interest rates. But because it was so high, the board expected expects that further increases in interest rates will be needed in the months ahead. And this is very bad news for Sydney's house prices. It's unclear how many more interest rate rises we'll need, but if it's three or more, Sydney's loans are so large on average that a cash rate of 4%, meaning mortgage rates around 6.5%, could push many homeowners over the edge. And this could lead to distressed selling of houses, which could further accelerate house price declines. But the RBA is in a very difficult position because it can't allow inflation to stay at those elevated levels. So there's no simple fix for the RBA and they may end up having to crash Sydney's housing market. Now the shock's going to be so much worse for those coming off fixed interest rates. Nearly one in four mortgages will switch from ultra low fixed interest rates to the current much higher rates in 2023. So this this year, thousands of borrowers are going to have the mortgage shock of their lives. And for some, it really will be mortgage hell. Now this doesn't mean that everyone will be forced to sell because most people will cut costs or do whatever they can to make sure they can keep their house. But the real worry is if unemployment starts to rise. Because if someone loses their job and can't find another one quickly, that would be a disaster if you have a large mortgage. So worst case scenario for Sydney and the rest of Australia is if in interest rates stay high at the same time that unemployment starts to rise. That scenario could actually see a collapse in the Australian housing market, which would be devastating for the economy and devastating for many people's lives. So what's my personal view of the Sydney housing market? Well, as the clear most expensive housing market in Australia and one of the least most affordable in the entire world, in my opinion, Sydney has plenty more house price declines to come. So far, they've fallen 14% from the peak. So with more interest rates to come in 2023, I believe we'll see further declines taking the full drop to around 20 or 25% from the peak. Now, even with those declines, Sydney's house prices will still be extremely expensive and extremely unaffordable. And with the higher interest rates, affordability has actually deteriorated even further. Now, if we see the worst case scenario of high interest rates and rising unemployment, then I think it's a real possibility that Sydney will see a 30% decline from the peak of the artificially inflated housing bubble. And that, my friends, would be something that's never been seen in Australian housing history. But one thing we know for sure, it's going to be a bumpy ride. I'm Biko Constantinos. <laughs>